Hello my friends, today I checked my computer and I noticed that Luminar Neo had a new update with layers and portrait AI and a few other things. So I figure I'll make a video and take you through the whole the new things and the old things. For those of you that never use Luminar, this is a good chance to see what it's about, if it's something you want or you like or you need. So let's get right into it. I chose a few stock images for us. We'll start with this one. We'll go to filter. I'm in Photoshop right now, but we'll go to filter, Skylum software, Luminar Neo. And immediately as it opens, you'll see that now we have layers over here on the left side and we have all our tools, editing tools on the right side. I'm just going to give you, I'm not going to edit any photos really. I'm just going to go through every one of these tools just so you can see what they're about. On the tools section, you have the essentials, which is develop. Just like in Lightroom, you'll have exposure. Then you have smart contrast, highlights, shadows, black and whites, curves, color, where you adjust your temperature, tint, saturation, vibrance, sharpness, noise reduction, and optics. So that's pretty much on the develop module. Let me see how I can collapse all of these now. All right. Then you have enhance AI. This is not new. This has been around with Luminar for a while now. So when you move the slider to the right, you will see you'll apply some contrast, some clarity, maybe some sharpness. Then we have Erase. Erase is where you can choose to remove the power lines or the dust spots. We'll come to this one later because I have some example for the power lines. This image does not have any power lines. Structure, it's kind of sharpening clarity. They have a few tools that kind of does almost the same thing. But this one becomes very crunchy when you move it to the right or very blurry when you move it to the left. Color. This is where you adjust your saturation, vibrance, color cast. Then you have your black and white adjustments. You have your details. They split the details into small, medium, and large. And the same thing is kind of like clarity, sharpness. But you can target where you want them. Denoise, that's where you remove noise from your image. Landscape, you can do dehaze or apply a golden hour, like golden tone. Foliage, en foliage enhancer just turns the greens more green. You can make them almost neon. Then there's the vignette tool. Relight. Um, I'm going to choose a different example to show you this relight. Let's get out of this one. I'll cancel it. Because real light is a special one. It's supposed to use depth map and you will see what I mean. So we're opening this one on Luminar Neo. It's a little bit slow, but there it is. So we'll go back to real light AI. And here you're supposed to be able to brighten the near. So if you move it to the right, the near gets brighter. And if you move it to the left, the near gets darker. Now this is the depth. So if I move the depth to the right, it moves towards, you see that, towards the middle of the image. So I can choose just a little bit on the bottom or keep going up. And then you can darken the far or brighten it. Now, let's see, this is not really, it's trying to do a depth map, but let's see if I darken the foreground and brighten the far. And now I move this depth slider. As you can see, let's do it the other way around. We'll, bright, we'll darken the far and brighten the near. So you see what it did? It has a depth map, but it's not very accurate at all. Like we're getting this blob over here. So it's not the linear gradient, but it's not the most accurate depth map either. Then you get the sky. Um, Sky Eye is where you pick your sky and replace it. I don't know how good it's going to do because this is very blurry over here. But usually this Sky Eye works really well. 
I would say that's the only reason I bought Luminar over the years, just because the sky replacement tool is so good. It's way better than Photoshop and it has a lot of um, uh, tools you can make make your photo blend in better and work better with your sky. So I really like the, the sky replacement tool. Then you have atmosphere and here you can add fog, layer fog, mist and haze. To me, they all kind of just look fake. I mean, you know, it's like going the opposite of the haze in Lightroom. I'm going to increase the depth. Then you have sun rays where you can add sun rays. Let's see, you can pick where you want to place it. Let's say I want to place it right in between the horses over here. Just to do something funky. There you go. And then you can play with it and adjust it. And sometimes it makes it look cool in the photos. Dramatic, it's another tool that will mess with contrast and sharpening. Mood, that's where you can apply lots. So let's see, Palm Spring. There you go. And then you can adjust the amount, the contrast, the saturation. Toning. It's uh, just like color toning in Lightroom. You can choose highlights. You'll the amount, let's see. Yes, you increase your saturation, pick your color. and say I want to put some golden. Decrease the saturation. Choose your shadows, increase the saturation, choose a blue, and then decrease saturation. And that would be like before and after. Matte, that's just that, it makes your photo matte, like raises the blacks. Mystical, this is a cool one sometimes, it makes your photos look more like paintings. So you see if I increase it, this is before and after. Sometimes I use it just for creative ways, for flowers and such. Glow, this is where you can choose your orton effect or soft focus. And you can increase the amount, get another kind of painterly effect. You can add film grade. Portrait bokeh, let's choose a different photo of a portrait so we can see what that is about. So I'm gonna cancel out of here. And let's see, we'll choose this portrait. Go back to filter, sky loom, whoops, sorry. Luminar Neo. It's taking its sweet time and there we are. Let's go into the portrait bokeh. I know a lot of people are very excited about this. I'm gonna increase the slider all the way to 100 so we can see what it does. And there you have it. This is before and after. I think I did a pretty good job. If you hover with your mouse over the subject, it will show you the mask. And this is a really good mask, actually. It doesn't look like you missed any parts. So I'm very, very pleased with this. It worked really well. So that is Portrait Bokeh. Then you have Face AI. And here you can lighten the face. You'll recognize the face and you can just apply more light to the face. And you can slim face, just like with liquify. This is before and after. Please don't do this to your clients unless they ask you to. Then we have skin AI. Let's zoom in so we can really see what this does. So there we are, nice and close. I'm increasing it all the way to 100. And all right, they did some things. It looks like it tried to remove all the blemishes. Let's see. This is before and after. Before and after. It's not bad, but it does create this like sharpening artifacts. I'm not sure I like that. But that's for you to play with. Something just went wonky there. Then we have body AI. Let's get a different example for that one. So I'm gonna cancel out of this one. And we'll choose this image. Let's 
and we'll wait for it to open. There we go. And we'll go to body AI. Here is a way you can alter the shape of the body. If you move the slider to the right, it will slim it. And if you move it to the left, it will make it wider, thicker. So this is before and after, or if you slim it, before and after. I'm gonna reset that. And then you can just shrink the abdomen. If somebody has a little bit of a tummy, you can just move that to the right. And that's before and after. I'm gonna reset that. High key, it does just that. It turns your photo in a high key. It has to be the right kind of photo. You can't have like a dark and moody photo and try to make it high key. It's not gonna work. But as you see, as I increase it, it kind of desaturates the color, it brightens it. And there you go. That's your high key. I'm gonna reset it. Then you have super contrast. Another one, a lot of, they have a lot of contrast sliders and sharpening sliders. And then color harmony. There's the layers on the left. As you can see, it doesn't look like you can just apply like a solid color layer or anything like that. It's just this flares, light leaks, sparkles, and stardust bokeh. So let's, let's choose something. Let's do this light leak. All right, so that's our light leak. You can reduce the opacity over here onto the layer properties. You can choose the blending mode. So right now it's a screen. Let's say if I go to soft light, there's soft light. Um, it looks like they have blending modes now, which was not available before because they didn't have layers, but they don't have all the blending modes. If you look here, for example, uh, linear light, it's not available. And there are a few other that are missing. So you can also change the layer position, like vertically, you can switch it or horizontally and that's pretty much all you can do with layers right now it looks like all your edits are here for me it doesn't show anything because I reset everything after every uh, edit I did let's see presets for this preset for this photo they are suggesting a few let's choose this one and there you go before and after. I don't know about this one. Let's see what other presets they have here. Close-ups, brush-up, before, and after. I don't see much at all there. Anyway, this is the new Luminar Neo, and um, I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Skylar Ewing, and I will see you next time.